fresh review of verse 6. The Bible says, to the praise of His glory of His grace. So, according to verse 5, we were predestinated to become His children, adopted children, as to praise, as a praise for what? The glory of His grace. That's how much glory His grace has, that we should praise it where we were predestinated to be His adopted children. And that because of the glory of His grace, He made us accepted in the Beloved. So remember, He made us a partaker of the Beloved. And it shows that no matter how many sins you committed, even those who are unrepented of certain wicked sins, we saw that they were still considered part of the Beloved. We saw that in our last uh, Bible study. All right, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. All right, one of the most important verses that you want to know, the Bible says, in whom we have redemption. All right, redemption means to buy back, okay? It means to buy back. Now, we're going to look at a lot of... Ephesians 1 is perhaps the best chapter that will talk about all your spiritual blessings accompany salvation. Amen. So remember that. So Ephesians 1 will have it all. It ha talks about adoption. We saw it earlier. It talked about predestination. We saw it earlier. And then we also saw redemption. Now we're seeing redemption. It mentions about, it also mentions about His grace. Grace basically means, as I've taught you before, something you don't deserve, yet you get it. Yeah. And these other two terms, I already defined it to you in our previous Ephesians study, so I won't do it here. So in whom, so in whom, that's in Jesus uh, Christ, all right? So because of verse 5 and 6, because of Jesus Christ, we have redemption. He bought us back, but it had to have value and payment. It was through his precious blood. That is extremely important. This verse is negated in your modern Bibles. Modern Bibles will take out through his blood. Some of you who didn't know that, now you know. So that's why modern Bibles, they have serious mistakes. It's the King James Bible. That's the only pure, perfect words of God. So through His blood is subtracted in modern Bibles. Not only that, it has such a detrimental effect that John MacArthur had the audacity to say that the blood of Jesus Christ is not that significant or important concerning our salvation. It's only referring to his death, the, the, his very act of death. But his blood itself is not that important. No, it is important. Amen. So that's the, that is the trap that you get into when you have a scholastic mindset that approves of different Bible versions Amen. into Alexandria manuscripts, which John MacArthur is a fan of. He is a fan of different modern Bibles. Now, I think that he, so it seems like he's more TR sympathetic from what I recall, to be fair to him. But nevertheless, the, the New King James Version, which his reference Bible is based off of, which he thinks is based off of TR manuscript, still has Alexandrian corruptions in it. So it doesn't change that fact. All right, because of the blood, look at the next part of verse 7, the forgiveness of sins. So no matter how many sins you've committed, You've got to understand that it's all been eliminated because of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So sins are eliminated through this. According to the riches of His grace. So this redemption, adoption, predestination, all of this is a part of the riches of His grace. That goes back to verse 3 of chapter 1, right? Blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 is truly everything of the riches of His grace. So if you get discouraged, read Ephesians 1. And then count all the blessings God did for you at the moment you got saved. Your problem is, is that when you got saved, you, you, you expect all that to happen. You say that I should have all this. It should be a part of my life. That's No, you shouldn't have all this. What are you talking about? You shouldn't have all this. So at salvation, you, uh, God gave you all this bonus, which the Old Testament Jews did not have all at once. So you should be very thankful to the Lord. 
Let's look at uh, verse 7 again, the riches of His grace. So I want you to remember that because when you go through discouragement or you go through your prayer life, recall that His grace has riches in it. So then if I were you, I'd claim any promise I can find that has to do with His grace because it's supposed to have riches in it. The more that you focus on that, the more you can concentrate on your prayer life for His grace the more you can discover His grace working in your life and the more gratitude that you feel and the peace that you feel because of how much riches there are in His grace. So I would emphasize that. Verse 8, wherein He hath abounded toward us. So because of the riches of His grace, He, he abounded, He increased, He gave you so much excessively toward you, all of us, in all wisdom and prudence to know about this so he gave you both wisdom and he also gave you prudence about this go to James chapter 1 James chapter 1 so these are all based on his riches of his grace so wisdom and prudence is based off of that Look at James chapter 1. So it is important that, like I mentioned to you before, when you're praying to the Lord, focus on the riches of His grace. That way the Lord can give you more things when you pray. So one of the promises is that you gain wisdom. Look at the book of James chapter 1. Because you got saved... If you lack wisdom, then you just need to pray for it, brethren. That's what you just need to do. Look at James chapter 1. <clears throat> Look at verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him, what? Ask of God that giveth to all men, how much? Liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So notice that he'll give you so much, he'll give you liberally. Why? Because it's all based on the riches of his grace. So you gain wisdom... And not only that, you also gain prudence. Okay, so wisdom is basically uh, not just knowing, but experience of the knowledge. Knowing how to use the knowledge. That's the idea of wisdom. Knowledge is just gaining all the information. But how many of you have wisdom? Knowing how to use the knowledge. That's a huge difference. It's one thing to just know the soul winning lesson, right? Gaining all the knowledge and writing it down. But it's another thing having the experience to take that knowledge in soul winning and transfer it in knowing how to use it to people. Huge difference, right? Especially for some of you who did homework. So wisdom, you all need that. A lot of arrogant Bible believers and prideful onliners, they all have this problem. They think they have wisdom. They know it all so they can correct the pastor. They can correct the church. No, what they have is knowledge, not wisdom. Right. Just because you know some things more than the pastor, listen up now, this will be very important for you. Just because you know some things more than the pastor, it doesn't mean you have as much wisdom as he does. Didn't you know that there are plenty of lost people who know more than you do? So just because you know more doesn't mean you're the one that must be right. It doesn't mean that. It's, you don't know how to use it. That's your problem. Prideful people don't know how to use their knowledge. <clears throat> prudence is basically where you're being careful you're being careful before you say and do or think something so that's the thing about prudence are you prudent see God granted you not just experience but the carefulness of it a lot of believers lack in these two things if you have these two things you can pretty much pastor a church almost but a lot of people they don't know how to be careful that's why uh, Plenty of onliners who think they know so much Bible, they just start a channel. They can't start a church work because they know they can't gain people. Why? Because they lack prudence. They know what they say and how they lead and guide the ministry, that it would lose followers. But online, it's very easy to gain it. Why? Because you're just spitting out information. That's it. But prudence is knowing, how, being careful with the knowledge. Sometimes you have to be careful with what you say to people. All that knowledge, you can't just, just blah, 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 like a, blurt it out like a computer. You have to be careful of it. Sometimes it's just bad timing, for example, to knock over a Mary statue and criticize it when you're witnessing to a lost Catholic who's about to get saved. Mm -hmm. 
See, so you have to be knowing how to be careful with the knowledge. Wisdom is the experience of it. So I know when to mention what's wrong with the image of Mary to the lost Catholic in the right timing, with the right person, the right situation. All right, let's look at verse 9 of Ephesians 1. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. So God, he made known to you the mystery of his will. So based off of verse 8, the wisdom and prudence you gain. Based off of what? The previous verse behind it, all the riches of his grace. So remember, all the riches of his grace has to do with basically verse 3. All the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So up in heaven, you gain all these spiritual blessings. Uh, let me know if I'm out of bounds. So you gain all these spiritual blessings from the riches of His grace. And it is God who gives to you the wisdom and prudence of all this. And He makes known to you the mystery of all this. So if there's something that you should know is the mystery or the knowledge that you should know the most is your salvation. All the spiritual blessings that you gain. That should be something that you should know the most. If you know more about, if you know more about prophecy than you know about this one, then you're in serious unbalanced issues. Now, remember the Bible says is that it's good that we know prophecy, but here's the thing is that this is the one that you should prioritize more. You should prioritize more on this. If you only have knowledge of this one and you don't have knowledge of prophecy, then yeah, I would agree that there would be issues with you because you should know everything in the Bible, not just selected portions. But if there's something that you should know most in your doctrines is basically Pauline epistles, that means. All that has to do with your salvation, Christian doctrine. Paul is the apostle who wrote all of that. So having made known unto us the mystery of his will. So you got to know the... So he made known to you the mystery of this, and this is all in his will. This is all in his will, and not only that, this is all according, if you keep reading, to his good pleasure. So it, it is done to please God. It is for his pleasure, and it's good where you know everything about salvation, which he had purposed in himself. So he already purposed in himself, he already planned and settled in himself everything of all these spiritual blessings for you. So you should know about that. He gave you that mystery. He revealed to you that mystery to know. Now let's compare this one with Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Notice a similar wording with Romans 8, 28. And... Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9 and you're going to see that again with Ephesians 1 11. Ephesians 1 11. The, a good key text to realize is Ephesians 1 it goes pretty much hand in hand with Romans 8. This is why Calvinists they'll claim that the golden chain of redemption process and their two favorite books are Ephesians 1 and Romans 8. The only difference with us and them is that uh, they are Calvinist in their doctrines about it. We are not. We believe Romans 8, Ephesians 1 is based on free will and choice, whereas the Calvinists, they don't believe in that. However, what we do agree with them is that Romans 8 and Ephesians 1, a lot of it goes hand in hand with all the spiritual blessings the Lord gave to you. So notice the wording. The greatest, perhaps the greatest promise in your Bible, Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Notice how that wording matches with Ephesians 1.9. Yeah. Notice how that wording matches with Ephesians 1.11. It's, his, it's based on His promise. So we can know. So we can know. It's not something abstract. And I think that's a key difference with us and Calvinists. So Calvinists, some of them teach that you can never know when you really got saved. 
Because they base it on God giving you His grace or electing you to get saved. Not something of your free choice where you chose to believe. So imagine being that paranoid Calvinist not wondering when you got saved. Because why? If you put your own free will to believe on Christ, then the Calvinists think that that's you doing it. That's not genuinely God. So when did God genuinely give it to you? I don't know. So some Calvinists who are hardcore teach that you can't really know when you got saved. Harold Camping, he went, uh, the guy who was infamous for the rapture dates, Harold Camping became so infamous where he used the book of Jonah, where the people just kept crying to God, crying to God out of repentance. And then he says, you just don't know when you might get saved. So you just have to keep doing what the children of Nineveh did. Just cry out to God and repent. Just cry out to God and repent. Well, then uh, you will never know when you got saved. That's sad. That's depressing. But the verse says, when we look at verse 9, having what? May known unto us the mystery of His will. So God may known unto us the mystery of His will about His salvation by grace here. See that? So according to verse 9, that debunks Calvinism. We can know. God gave us the knowledge to perceive it and to catch it and to know. Because... Notice that some Calvinists will say we will never know the divine counsel of God. Well, we won't know everything, but we do know this is that according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that counsel that he determined with our salvation by grace, he made it known to us. It's something that we don't uh, like we never know, like the Calvinists teach. That's wrong.